the whole truth. Nothing but the truth. The hidden truth. The vital human drama of the famous lie detector. Bringing you authentic case histories from the files of the late Leonard Keeler, one of the world's foremost scientific criminologists. Mr. Keeler's real-life part is played by Hart McGuire, who reveals from week to week some of the most baffling human dramas of our times. The Hidden Truth. A few years ago, a slight, sandy-haired little man named Stuart Ho was seated at the desk of Detective Sam Drake of the Los Angeles Bureau of Missing Persons. Mr. Ho was considerably shaken, and from time to time he seemed about to faint, but gradually, after many stops and starts, Drake drew the story out of him. Mrs. Henrietta Hall, age 46, had disappeared from their ranch home in the nearby community of Burbank at 9.30 p.m. two nights before. Like her husband, she was quite small, weighing about 96 pounds. Only 96 pounds, eh, Mr. Hall? Why, she might have just evaporated. Mr. Drake, if you, you see fit to make a joke of this matter... Oh, not at all. Uh, my apologies, Mr. Hall. Go ahead. As far as her husband knew, Henrietta Hall had taken nothing with her except her purse containing a small sum of money. He couldn't think of any reasons that might have prompted her to leave. Drake noticed Hall's haggard, hollow-eyed appearance. He realized the little man was genuinely concerned. I haven't slept for two nights. Oh, I should have come here after I discovered she was gone, but I was hoping she'd return and there wouldn't be any scandal. Scandal? I mean, my family's never had its name in the paper. And... Uh, sure, I understand how you feel about it. But sometimes the papers are a big help. Many a missing person has been located through the press, you know. I suppose so. Well, I was foolish not to have come here sooner, but uh, just not myself. Mr. Hall, I'd suggest that you let me handle it from now on. You just go home and try to relax. I'll call on you when I need you. All right. Uh, but, but don't hesitate to call on me, Mr. Drake. I want to cooperate in every way. If anything happens to Henry later on, I'll forgive myself. Sam Drake checked the details of his report once more, then picked up his telephone. This is Drake. Got an assignment for you. I want you to round up all the newspaper reporters assigned to this division. Yeah, that's right. Got a case for him to shoot the works on. Rush it, will you? Again, Sam Drake went over his report. He'd heard of Stuart Hall in spite of his slight and nondescript appearance. Hall was a man of considerable means and influence in the Burbank Ranch community in which he lived. Hall was a successful nurseryman enjoyed a clean reputation amongst his neighbors. He'd been married to Henrietta for 25 years, and it seemed strange that she should, of her own free will, walk out in her home and husband. Hmm. There's something here that doesn't meet the eye. Drake walked into the teletype room, and his report went out over the machines. The Los Angeles Bureau of Missing Persons was in action. In less than an hour, the story of Henrietta Hall's disappearance was in print. And Drake's report reached police headquarters scattered all over California. Apparently, however, there was one person who hadn't seen the newspapers. About an hour and a half after Stuart Hall had left, a pretty girl about 20 years old called at Sam Drake's office. Yes? What can I do for you? I couldn't put it off any longer. If father isn't going to report mother missing, I will. All right, let's have it. Mother's name, please. Henrietta Hall. What? Just a minute. What's your name? Susan Hall. Two nights ago, my mother left the house and no one's seen her since. I tried to get father to report it, but... Your father has reported it, Susan. Oh. Well, then... Then you know all about it? Everything except what's happened to her. What do you think happened to your mother, Susan? She wouldn't have walked out on Dad without telling me. I know she wouldn't. Mm. You seem pretty positive about that. I am positive. 
In two weeks, my brother Ralph is due home from Japan. He's been in the army of occupation over there, and Mother's been getting ready for his homecoming. I'm positive that a team of wild horses couldn't have dragged her away with Ralph coming home. Yes, that does make a lot of sense, doesn't it? Uh, Susan, you mentioned that your mother wouldn't walk out on your dad at this time. Have there been times when she might have walked out on him? I mean, have your mother and dad ever discussed divorce? Oh, yes, they did. Oh? I think mother even went to a lawyer once. What was the trouble between them? Well, I guess it was Ralph and me. Dad's always been pretty strict with us. Well, he didn't mean to be. It's just his way. No one could want a better father. But mother often gave us permission to do something that dad had refused to let us do. Mother was always pretty easy with us, and well, it made Dad furious sometimes. It it just started them arguing. Mm -hmm. How long ago did your mother see her lawyer? Oh, a long time ago. About five or six years, I think. Before Ralph went into the Army. Five or six years? Well, an argument that long ago couldn't have had much bearing on what happened two nights ago. I don't believe my mother went away by herself, Mr. Drake. I can't believe it. Well, why not? She... She was deathly afraid of the dark. She never left the ranch alone at night unless she drove. She has her own car, but it's still in the driveway, just where she left it that afternoon. Susan, I'm going to ask you a personal question about your mother. But, well, you understand uh, any information that can help us get to the bottom I understand. As far as you know, has your mother ever had any interest outside of your father? You, you mean another man? Yes. Never. Oh, Mother loves Dad very much. I know she does. He's always been wonderful to her. Except for their arguments about Ralph and me. Well, they've never had any real trouble. Well, thank you, Susan. You'll be around if I need you, won't you? I'll be at the ranch. Father's so upset that... Oh, I feel I ought to stay right there with him all the time. And you're perfectly right. This whole thing is naturally a great strain on your father. Well, goodbye, Susan. Goodbye. And thank you. Hey, hello there. Nard Keeler. <laughs> what are you doing in town, man? Oh, Sam, just a fast business trip. <laughs> Flying back to Chicago in a couple of hours and thought I'd drop by for a well, chat. come on in, come on in. Nice. Can't think of anyone I'd rather chat with. I, uh, see by the papers you got another big one on your hands, Sam. Yeah. Wish I knew just how big. Hey, how do you happen to be in town in the case without my knowing anything about it, huh? <laughs> Not a case, Sam. I said business. Oh, Managed to interest the DA's office in that lie detector of yours? Well, enough so that he's sending some of his top men to my Chicago polygraph school to learn to operate the machine. Well, good for the DA. Yeah. But why shouldn't he be interested anyway? You've proved a thousand times what a great job that machine can do. Say, when did you say your plane leaves? In a couple of hours. Two hours. Have you got a polygraph machine with you? Well, I left one at the DA's office for them to experiment with, but what's in your mind? Come on. We pick it up and run over to Burbank. Hey, now, wait a minute. Who's the subject? Stuart Hall. It'll save us a lot of time if we can be sure he's given us a straight story. Oh, I read his story in the paper. You got reason to doubt it? Oh, just a slight one. But so far, this thing makes very little sense. She was looking forward to her son's arrival from Japan. And yet she's gone. She's a woman of means, yet she pulls out with nothing but a few dollars in her purse and the clothes in her back. Have you an answer to it, Nard? Well, it would help to be sure her husband's telling the truth, now, wouldn't it? It would. Are you with me, Nard? I have two hours. Sam Drake and I picked up the polygraph at the district attorney's office and drove out to Burbank. As we drove up to the house itself, we saw a typically Californian ranch dwelling. Long, low, trim, and glittering white. opened by Susan Hall. After the introduction was over, Drake said, Mr. Keeler and I would like to talk to your dad, Susan. Well, he, he's terribly sick and upset. The doctor's been here and sent him to bed. You don't think he's feeling well enough to answer a few questions? If he's awake, I'll ask him. I'll be right back. Suppose he is sick, Nard. 
What then? Well, I might get a mass reaction. A mass reaction? Yeah. He might be too emotionally upset to give us a representative reading on the polygraph. You know, fluctuations in his blood pressure, pulse rate, rate of breathing, and skin resistance. Well, they might be all jumbled up due to his illness, his genuine grief and concern over his wife's disappearance. Mm-hmm. Might be better to wait until Hall's in a more normal condition, Sam. Uh, what about that plane of yours? Will I see a phone over there? You want me to stick around? I sure do. Until we can make some sense out of this thing. All right. I'll call the airport and cancel. Well, what about it, Susan? How is he? I don't think you'd better try and see him now, Mr. Drake. Dad's not asleep, but well, he's twisting and turning something awful, and he's shivering all over. What do you think, Nard? Mm, some of the time, Sam, I think Miss Hall's right. We'd better let her father get some rest. All right, Susan. We'll be back in the morning. Oh, uh, Mr. Drake. Yes? I, uh, well, I just found something in my mother's room that puzzles me. Hey, what have you there? It's my mother's upper plate, and, well, that's what worries me. My mother was always terribly self-conscious about her mouth, and she wouldn't dream of going anywhere without this. Susan, do you think your mother has a substitute plate? Another one just like this? Well, she might have, but I hardly think so. Have you told your dad about this? Oh, no. Oh, no, I didn't want to distress him any more than I can help. Uh, you're perfectly right. Uh, don't say a word to him about it. He seems to be having trouble enough as it is. Well, we'll be back in the morning, Susan. Goodbye, Miss Hall. Goodbye, Mr. Keeler. Getting warm, Sam? Warm. Sizzling, Nard, sizzling. Stuart Hall told me his wife was around the house all day. And he didn't miss her until 9.30 that night. Unless she has another one, that denture on her table means that she's retired for the night. Yeah, sounds logical. She probably had no intention of leaving the place. I don't think Henrietta Hall ever did leave the place, Nard. Not alive, anyway. The Hidden Truth continues in just a moment. After leaving the Hall Ranch in Burbank, we made one stop to call the airport and cancel my plane reservations. Then we drove on to San Fernando and did some checking with Dr. Coles, Henrietta Hall's dentist. Hmm. Yes, this is the one, all right. I made this plate for Mrs. Hall about six months ago. She was terribly sensitive about her appearance and insisted on having the denture immediately after extraction. Did you make her a substitute plate by any chance? No. Only this one. Mm. Well, thank you, Dr. Coles. Thank you very much. Outside the dentist's office, Sam Drake stopped and made a very positive statement. Nard, it's a lead pipe cinch that Henrietta Hall has been murdered. Yeah, it sure looks that way, Sam, but where's the body and who did it? Yeah, we're in a ticklish spot. We'll have to step easy from now on. The logical suspect is her husband. But what's his motive? But how can you accuse him of murder unless you produce the body? Well, that's just it. I can't. Unless you can break him down and get a confession on that lie detector of yours. Uh, if it's all the same with you, I just as soon wait until Hall calms down a bit and gets more rational. Okay. But in the meantime, there's only one thing to do. We've got to search that property, and we've got to come right out in the open and tell Hall that we suspect murder. <laughs> The next morning, Sam Drake and I called on Stuart Hall again. Sam was determined to see him in spite of his illness. We found him still in bed, but sitting up and reasonably composed. If we expected to find any signs of guilt when Sam told Hall his suspicions, we were disappointed. There was no sign of guilt. Only shock and dismay. If you think Henrietta's been murdered, well... Naturally, I want to do everything I can to help you find her killer. Now, take the whole ranch apart if you want to. It hasn't been worth a hoot to me ever since Henrietta disappeared. Oh, wait a minute. What are those metal rods your men are carrying? Hall was looking out of the window and saw Drake's men in the yard. Uh, they're probing rods, Mr. Hall. They save a lot of digging. 
My men intend to probe every inch of your ranch. Oh, Mr. Hall, uh, while we're here, I'd like to ask a favor of you. Anything, anything I can do. Sooner or later, we're going to ask everyone on this ranch, you, your daughter, your employees, perhaps some of your neighbors, everyone who might have some inkling as to your wife's whereabouts, to take a lie detector test. Lie detector? Do you object, Mr. Hall? Mr. Keeler has the apparatus with him. He could run your test right now. Do you object? No. No, I don't object. But do you have to do it right now? I'm a sick man. Can't you see I'm a sick man? Talk to my doctor. He'll tell you how sick I am. All right, all right. I'll talk to your doctor, Mr. Hall. And just as soon as he thinks you're in condition... I'm going to insist that you cooperate. I'll cooperate. I want to cooperate, but I'm a very sick man. Sam Drake's men now went to work in earnest. Ten acres is a lot of property. But they laid it out systematically and started to go over it inch by inch with their probing rods. Scrapings were collected from the furnace bricks, together with ashes and debris, and taken to the crime laboratories. But the first day's efforts were scheduled for failure. The probing rods found no body. The laboratory microscopes found no evidence that Henrietta Hall's body had been cremated in the furnace. Nard, I've been talking to Hall's doctor. What'd you find out, Sam? How's Hall coming along? He's as well as he'll ever be. The doctor claims he's a chronic complainer. Paul's not as sick as he's pretending to be. He's faking Nard. Ah, an interesting case. Yeah. So interesting that I've had him picked up. He's being held incommunicado at the city jail. He'll really stew down there, won't he? Well, let him stew. He's in trouble. The only way he can clear himself is by taking that test of yours. All right. I'll go down to the jail with you in about an hour. If it's all right with you, I'm going to ask Susan Hall to take a polygraph test right now. I won't answer any more questions, Mr. Keeler. I won't. I won't. You're just delaying the test, Susan. If you refuse to answer, it's quite obvious you're hiding something from me. I'm not hiding anything. I'm not. Susan, tell me. Do you know who murdered your mother? No, I told you I didn't know. I told you. But you're lying, Susan. The polygraph shows you're lying. You do know, don't you, Susan? I don't. I don't. You brought your mother's denture to Mr. Drake just to throw suspicion on your father, didn't you? Dad did kill her. Who else would? You know who else would, don't you, Susan? don't. I don't. Let her alone. Let my sister alone. Well, Ralph, you got back from Japan sooner than anyone expected, didn't you? I... I I got back four days ago. I know. I read about it in the paper. Changed your orders, didn't they? He knows, Ralph. He couldn't make me tell him, but... But that lie detector, he knows. You shouldn't have tried to make him blame Dad, Susie. I, I, I know what you were trying to do. But they've got Dad in jail. We can't let them do that. But Ralph, you... Oh, Ralph. It's no use. I could never live with it anyway. Nobody could live with it. It keeps coming back to me. It won't go away. It keeps coming back to me. Coming back. Is someone there? Don't be frightened, Mom. It's me. Oh, Ralph! Ralph, darling! Don't make any noise. Oh. No one saw me come into the house, and I don't want anyone to know I'm back until I've had a chance to talk to you. But we weren't expecting you for two weeks. What is it, Ralph? Is something wrong? Not, not unless you think it's wrong. What have you done? Oh, tell me quickly. I... 
I got married, Mum. Married? Why, Ralph. Ralph, that's wonderful. Oh, did you think your family would object to that? She's coming over in about a week. They're sending all the Japanese wives over in the next boat. Japanese? She's beautiful, Mom. Just like any other girl. Uh, and a lot sweller than a lot. I, I, I met her... Ralph, the... we... Oh, we can't let her come. Your father had never... But you've got to, Mom. You've got to square it with Dad. You don't know what she means to me. Oh, Ralph, I've squared things with your father all your life. But, son, this is one thing I can't do. I won't even talk to your father about this because I, I won't permit it myself. Tomorrow I'll talk to Army Headquarters about it. And I... Oh, oh. Mom. Oh. Mom, what's, what's the matter? Oh. What is it? We, you won't accept her here, Ralph. I know it's hard for you to understand, but I... Open your eyes. Mother, did I hear you call me? Ralph! I think she's dead, Susie. I don't know how it happened. But I think she's dead. Where is your mother now, Ralph? In... In the big greenhouse. Buried under the middle bench. It, it took me all night. I wanted Dad to think she'd gone away. Shock might have killed him, too. And I didn't want to lose Dad as well. Oh, no. I know you think I killed her, Susie. And, no. and you try to protect me. But I didn't kill her. I didn't. I, I think she was so stunned at, at my coming home and... and being married. I mean, her heart must have just... Oh, I want to believe you, Ralph. I want to believe you. A polygraph deception test substantiated Ralph Hall's story. As far as I could determine, he was telling the truth. And the coroner's verdict was in accord with the polygraph. Henrietta Hall's body was exhumed and there was no mark of violence. Her death was recorded as a stroke due to shock. Ralph Hall is back in Japan now and his sister and father carry on the ranch. But in the hearts of all of them dwells human tragedy. Tragedy that years cannot erase. Mm -hmm.